Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo grandmaster on this week's Nightfall, which is Goblin World. Now, I absolutely hate this strike, but I wanted to get one solo GM done this season. So, we're doing it on Night Stalker, bottom tree, obviously, with Gambler's Dodge for infinite, almost infinite invisibility. Because we're not actually planning on doing too much kind of combat during this strike we're going to just try and get to the boss as quickly as possible i'm using the seventh serif officer rifle mine has time payload on the main aspect that's for help with producing war mine cells tatara gaze it's a high a high impact long range sniper rifle it's good for breaking the boxes i'm running anarchy but the strategy that i originally produced i was using bad omens both will do the same job here so you can use a rocket launcher on my, you can see I'm running a, a war mine build. So we've got burning cells, obviously oppressive darkness and minor resist. The burning cells are gonna work really well with rage of the war mind. So burning cells do ex, uh, bur more burn damage. Rage of the war mind just does more solar damage with the explosions, and we've also got uh, global reach, which increases the range of the explosions those will become really helpful when we get to the boss and i'll explain a little bit more about that when we get there the rest of the mods are basically about me getting decent decent mobility because the faster you go the faster you higher your mobility obviously the faster you go better jumping all the rest of it but you get your dodge back faster i'm using graviton forfeit because it gives you roughly about two seconds extra invisibility you can use the chest plate to get the double the double melee, but I prefer to go with this. So that's going to be what I'm going to be using for this run. This is me. This is just, right after I'd done it. This is me just showing you guys. I did just do it right after this run. And there we go. That was the first time I'd ever beat this. So when you get in here, the one thing you need to remember is the dodge invis combo. You want to dodge as as soon after going invisible as you can so as you can see the dodge has quite a big range so when you throw your invis if at all possible you don't want to be running into areas and kind of trying to run past ads you want to be invisible going past all the ads but you'll see during this infinite forest section there are times where i'm not invisible because i'm trying to give my dodge a chance to come back when you exit the portal exit hard left and then the cyclops won't see you so as soon as we throw the invis, you'll see here I've got 9 mobility. I've thrown my smoke and then maybe a second afterwards I've dodged. So there is going to be a section where I'm, as you can see, I'm visible but I don't have my dodge. So what I'm doing is I'm going towards the next set of ads. Every time you throw your invis and you dodge, you want to make sure when you throw your invis that you can dodge near an ad pretty quickly. You want your dodge to come back when you need it for the invis 100 percent mobility would, would almost ensure it as you can see there's no ads about i'm not in much danger so i chose to just hold off with all my invisibility till there was an ad i could dodge next to you just want to give your dodge a chance to come back so that you're not coming out of invisibility with 50 percent dodge because then you're in trouble you want to give your dodge the maximum amount of time to come back secondly don't push into areas where there's no, you know, where, where you could be in trouble when you can't go invis. Because stuff like that can happen. The third little tip about the Infinite Forest is on the Grand Ma oh, on the Master, Grandmaster, whichever, on this particular nightfall, uh, there's going to be a ton of Vex and Fallen. When you get to this section, you want to make sure there's no Fallen about. Because if there is, those Cyclopses will randomly fire at the Fallen. Which means you can die from collateral. So, once you get past that part, now we're into what I would what I would consider the, the strategic part. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go out here, we're going to stick hard left to the wall. When we get to the edge of the wall, we're going to throw our smoke, go and viz, and then we can dodge right at the ads. Then we're going to head over to the right. So as you can see, invis, dodge, and then we're going to go to the right. We're going to run over here, and there's kind of a little part over here. There's no ads. <clears throat> You're not in any danger. You can drop down here and stick stick to the wall and just hold off 
before throwing your invis. You're going to throw your invis and you're going to find an ad you can dodge next to before you go into the teleporter. But when you go into the teleporter, you're going to pull your sniper out and we're going to try and break this box as soon as it appears so we don't have to go into the into the bubble. Dodge, uh, invis, dodge, and then into the portal. Now, the dodge invis part of the actual strike, let's say the infinite forest isn't really part of the strike. The dodge invis part of of the strike isn't so important because you'll have plenty of time, most areas, to get your dodge back before you need it. So, as you can see, when I was pushing up to this area, I used that big tree for cover. And then I, what I'd done was I jumped on the rock, jumped and then jumped up. You've got two champions there. The more, this is like, I suppose this is quite an important tip. Try not to double jump when you don't have to. So when we get in here, I'm going to break the shield, change to the anarchy, throw my grenade to anarchy, and I'm going to get out of there. Now, let's say you're using a rocket launcher. What I was doing with the rocket launcher was exactly the same as I just done there. I was just throwing the grenade, one rocket, and then coming up here. Now, as you can see, the anarchy killed him. The rocket launcher normally needed another shot when you got up to the location I was at. So, come down, throw your smoke, dodge, get out of there. I wait down here to get my dodge back. You don't have to. You could just go, but I prefer to have my dodge. It gives me a chance to reload. So what I've done is thrown the smoke, dodge at that champion, get my, my invis back, and then head up to the next box. Now, you probably could break the box with the sniper before the, the shield comes, but I chose to do it like this. So invis... And then I go up, I get the dodge, I go up here, and I watch the timer. When the timer's just about to hit one, I break the shield, go and fizz, because my, I've almost got my dodge back. Dodge, on to the next section. So, you might have guessed by now, the only ads we're really going to be killing are the three big minotaurs that block your progress to the boss. So, this is the second one. We go and visit that corner. Don't dodge at the champion, dodge at the boss. Snipe, invis, and go. If you follow the route that I took getting out of there, the boss becomes available for you to kill. So, he'll be standing right in front of you. So, as you can see there, I just put a grenade on him, hit him with a couple of anarchy shots, and that, most of the time, will kill him. And then what we'll do, break, break the box that's over to the left with the sniper, and then what we're going to do is try and get the champions to come at us so we can get our invis back so as soon as they as soon as you see them teleporting you're good go go and vis and then you can dodge next to them to get your invis back and obviously i don't have to say this but i will you, getting your invis back is more important than waiting for dodge because your dodge will come back really quickly your invis won't it charges faster when you're when you're invisible using the graviton forfeit but not fast enough that you can just not get it. But you still want to wait, obviously, for your dodge. Now, when we get up to the top of here, you're going to throw your invis, and we're going to just we're going to go onto the ramp, dodge, and then we're going to cut across and get past these champions and all these ads pretty quickly. Now we're coming up to the the last minotaur. This one's the tricky one. So same thing again. We're going to throw your invis, dodge. And then we're going to make it up. Then we're going to snipe the box. And once we snipe the box, we're going to go and vis straight away. And we're going to go up to the back of the portal. Hit the boss with, so you see here, snipe, invis. Go up to the back. Now, you've got to be careful because an overload champion spawns here. So two anarchy. And then we're just going to jump around the back of the portal here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this overload to come below us. So we can dodge to get invis back. And then we can use the invis to throw a grenade, which obviously we've got a press of darkness on. So dodge there, get the invis. I move over to the right hand, I go invis, move over to the right hand corner, just so that they're shooting in a different location, and then throw my grenade. That should be enough to kill the, the boss. Dodge to get my invis back. And then I'll break the shield from behind, jump up, go invis, and then we're at the boss. Invis and dodge. Now I worked this strategy out on my my streaming channel which i've linked in the description if you fancy coming over <clears throat> and watching how how we kind of work out some of the runs stream tuesday friday saturday uh that is until beyond light beyond light comes 
probably going to be streaming a whole ton because there'll be new stuff. But you should just come out. You should check out the channel. You might you might enjoy it. So as you can see, when we went past the 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 Hydra, I went Envis again, meaning we land up here invisible. I'm going to go behind this Minotaur's leg, and I'm going to stay kind of close to the left leg, and as soon as the shield comes down, I'm going to crit the boss. As soon as I know it's going to come down. Now, the reason I'm doing that, as you can see, I'm now hitting the boss with Anarchy. I'll explain the strategy now so that we can talk about what's happening on the screen. The idea is the boss has three locations that he's going to move around. This location, then he's going to come behind us, then he's going to go over at the right. When he goes over at the right, he's going to shut up shop. And two, the two of the Minotaurs are going to become active. We want to leave one Minotaur up and alive. So that the boss doesn't move. And we can sh we can just fire at the boss. With with no worries of being killed. That's where the Warmind build comes in. The three Warmind mods that I'm using. Can help me break shields. Except... Really funny and, and where they break. So you can see I'm just aiming into the sky here. I'm waiting for this box for this right hand minotaur to appear. You can break one of the boxes before the shield comes up. So I've broke that. I've switched to anarchy. If you have got a rocket launcher, you could use a rocket launcher. And now I'm going to hit him, hopefully, with two anarchy shots. And then just put a couple of snipes on him, which stuns him. I hit him with another two anarchy. And just shoot, shoot, shoot. And as you can see, I made a war main cell. Which, when I shoot that, should kill, if I shoot it, will kill all these ads. But I want the second war main cell to break the other Minotaur's box. And the reason why is, this Minotaur, you can see over in the distance, we want him to come over and kind of just idly stand outside of this aura. Because you can see the ads aren't shooting me, the boss wasn't shooting me. But the Minotaur sometimes will just come over and stamp you. Now I'm saying sometimes. Because 90% of the time when I got here, he stomped me. Until I come up with this strategy. So as you can see, I'm trying to use the 7th Seraph weapon just to create war mine cells. I think I created one there, but it rolled down. So I couldn't break it. So kind of what's going to happen is, it ends up I shoot all the ads. And don't get a war main cell. Don't get a war main cell to break the the shield. So we're just shooting away at the ads here. What I'm actually going to have to do. Now we kill the one on the right. Which is the one you want to kill first. Once you kill the one on the right. Uh, the, the one that's further. The one that's furthest away. is all the way over the other side. He will then. As you can see I've got this war main cell. Slightly too far away to actually break that shield. But it killed all the ads. Now there are some ads over on the other side. As you can see. So I know I'm just going to. I picked up some special. I'll go back in my little place. And I'll just snipe. Uh, once, once, once all the ads that I can shoot with the hand cannon are gone. I'll snipe away. But. This is the strategy. No. You take out that right hand minotaur first. Right. Because. The way he walks over to you. It's really difficult to, to kind of position yourself in such a way where he won't stomp you. It's much easier to position yourself in a, in a way where this one over here won't stomp you. So I'm trying to get him to shoot on the right because when he does, right, what's going to happen is we're going to start from this location. I'm going to get behind this cover on the right. Get him to shoot on the right hand side and then I'm going to use my invis once he's shooting. And I'll dodge next to the Minotaur I was hiding behind to get my Invis back. We're going to make it over to this right hand side. I'm not going to push any further than where I am now. And we'll just clear some of these ads. Right? You should have a whole host of ads over here. So what we're going to do is hand cannon these ads. They'll come out of the bubble until we get that war main cell. Get the war main cell, sniper. It. it will break the shield, Invis, and go back to the, back to the Minotaur. Now... What I would suggest, you can see here, I'm quite, f I'm, 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 I'm a little bit back. I'm a little bit further back. And he just comes up and stands right in front of me. Make sure you're not dead against the legs, because if you are, he just comes and stamps you. Although, 
I have to add this in. I just have to. What you've just saw happen isn't going to happen every time. You're looking for that to happen. Now, in saying that, that's the first time I've used this strategy. The strategy I come up with on stream was I took that guy first. Because I could shoot the, the shield. Take the one on the right first. Every time. Leave that one at the back open. And obviously I didn't have to go into the shield. The one main cell broke the shield. It just all plays into your hands. Once that happens, once you break that, that Minotaur shield, get back here. Get in Viz and get back here. And then get yourself into a position right in between the legs, but, but further back in the shield. You can use your emotes. You can see when I'm firing my shots, you can see I'm quite close to the back of the shield. But it just puts more distance between you and the Minotaur. And you just want him to stand there. You don't want him to stamp you. And then... If you've got a rocket, you'd be safe to fire rockets from where I am. Uh, use your ammo, because the game will give you ammo back. But effectively, if you're here, and that Minotaur is standing right where he is now, just to your left, you've done it. You just have to just keep hitting your shots. And that's it. If you've made it to this part of the video and you were in stream today, leave a comment just saying that you've seen this, seen me doing this. Right, because it'd be nice to know that the guys that that stuck with the stream actually have got to witness me completing it. Uh, and as I say, for everyone else, this will work. This does work. You just have to you have to be patient with the, with the run. Learn a little bit extra each time. You know, you ninety percent of the time, nearly every t part of the time, you're not going to do this first time. Some people get lucky do it first time, but it's about learning the strategy and feeling comfortable in the strike and learning how how you can bend each section. As you can see, we've got a couple of cipher decoders. They've increased the drop rate of those, which is good. And that's the run, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps you guys. I hope you've enjoyed the run. Thanks to everybody that's stuck by the stream. Watch me do it on stream. And until the next video, guys, you take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.